Charlie just said something while we were prophesying on the strings, and that is, something's coming down. And it is. Something is coming down. placed my song deep within your heart I think before before you were born like he said to Jeremiah before you were born, He knew you, formed you and touched you. Before you were born, He, he touched you, knew this day would happen, knew your problems, knew your challenges, knew your victories, knew your everything about you. And even before you were born, He predestined you or put within you predestined prayers, prayers that were set there 
all it would take was for you to pray it out so in other words what God placed in you before you were born thousands of years ago is there residing and wanting to come out a prayer a proclamation faith but he cannot make that happen you have to do it and you know what I love about God is he's he listens to childlike faith Wow. Welcome everyone to House of Destiny. This is your boy Charles of the Ritz coming to you again on this Tuesday. Man, what a powerful, powerful statement and what a powerful proclamation and a powerful truth that just came forth. You know, I was searching for things to talk about today and, you know, I, I, you know I'm a man of prayer and, uh, and all of a sudden I, I came across this video in our archives. And I like the way it started out because uh, the prophet said, Charlie said before we got started that something was going to come down and something truly did. And guess what, everyone? We already know that God's word is applicable to every generation. It never goes to sleep. It, is ne it never stays stagnant, but it keeps going from glory to glory to glory. Something has to come down. And I know that in this country, in this country, unrighteousness has to come down and righteousness must prevail. Why? Because such is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Unrighteousness has to come down. Many times the Lord spoke through Prophet Kim about the unrighteousness that is that has prevailed in this land. And we know it to be true. We know this to be true. And so what God is saying right now on this day, and I want every one of you to really grasp this, to, to take this into your spirit. Can you imagine that before you were placed in your mother's womb, the very prayers, the very desires, the very essence of who you are in him is already there. That's why the devil works overtime to keep us in a state of fear, to keep us in a state of doubt, to try to keep us away from the truth, to try to bring about things that makes us feel good, to, to entice our flesh. You see, the devil is so good because it says in Genesis that the only access that he has is the dust of man. That's the only access that he had. For we were formed from the dust of the ground, but we were created in the image and according to the likeness of God. He can't touch that. And he knows that once we tap into that image, tap into that likeness, our true nature, who we really are, he loses. He loses. That's the reason why he works overtime. He works overtime to keep us in the things of the flesh, to keep us surrounded by the things of the temporary. But God is saying, and he said in that beautiful passage that we just, that we just heard, everybody, that before he even placed us in our wombs or in the mother of, uh, of the womb of our mothers, I'm sorry, that he knows everything about us. He knows our prayers, our desires. And so... All we have to do, that's the reason why I've titled this. All you have to do now is ask and believe. Just like the song that came forth. Ask and believe. Doubt not in your heart that the very things that you are asking for, the very things that you are believing for, like it says in Mark 11, 23 and 24, when, when Jesus says, say unto that mountain, any mountain, I don't care how big, how huge, how thick, it doesn't matter. Sit unto that mountain that has been presented before you as a stumbling block, as a, as a thing that says you can't go any further. You can say unto that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Doubt not within your heart that the very things that you are believing for and asking for, you shall have them. If you believe that way, you shall have it. You shall have it. So ask and believe. This is what God wants for this country. This is what God wants for every nation. For unrighteousness to come down. So that is what's coming down. 
Unrighteousness is coming down in this land. And righteousness is rising up. Come on, everyone. Ain't that beautiful? That every prayer that he, he it, it's already in him because he said he placed it in you. He placed it in us. So how do we tap into those prayers? How do we tap into them? It's very easy. It says it throughout the Bible. Paul writes about it or wrote about it many times. Praying without ceasing. What does that mean? Praying without ceasing. I love this definition. Prayer without ceasing basically means an attitude of God consciousness and God surrender that we carry with us all the time. Remember that song we sang? If David, David slew the lion, uh, slew the lion, he did it with an attitude. You know that song, Attitude? That's why I love that song. You see, it's an attitude. It's a way of life. That's the reason why I always and will always continue to preach that, look, we have to do what Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 says. We have to do this. We have to present our bodies holy and acceptable unto God. Okay? Holy and uh, 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 holy and, and just pure before God. You know, for this is our reasonable service. We have to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. It's a reasonable service. This is something that we do every day. And if we do this, no, I don't care what the world is saying. I don't care what the world is dictating. I don't care what they are thrusting at us. See, when we begin to present ourselves on a daily basis and to begin to walk with God, then the cares of this world, we, it, it will not only affect us, it won't affect us, but we won't conform to it. For we will see it for what it, uh, for what it is. How? Because our minds are being renewed, being transformed daily. And now we can prove, we can discern, we can see, we can know, we can understand, we can have revelation knowledge. It's what the capital thing is in all of this, revelation. We can have all of this and then we can know the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Ask and believe, everybody. Ask and believe. You know, we can be like Enoch. See, Enoch walked with God and he was not. In other words, the things of this world, death can touch him. The things of this temporary world, of this carnal world, could not touch him. He was not. Moses walked with God because Moses endured how? Because he saw that which is unseen. What does it say in Hebrews 11? One, it says chapter one, verses one, he said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of that that is hoped for and the substance of it is unseen. Moses endured because he lived, because he lived by that which was unseen. He walked with God. Unseen means that this in the natural, the things, your natural sight, your natural senses can't touch it. But when you walk with God, when you spend time with God, when you present yourself before him, worship him, then you will get outside of your flesh and then you will tap into your spiritual senses. Because as we have five fleshly senses, we have five spiritual senses. Then we can tap into each one of them. And guys, when we begin to walk like that, then we are truly walking victoriously. We are truly walking victoriously. Jeremiah chapter one, I have to read it. Verses four and five. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, behold, I formed, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Sanctification means that we were made holy. So in the womb, that's why the womb is a holy place, everyone. The world has dictated that it's a woman's right to do this and a woman's right to do this to a womb. No, God says that the womb of a woman holds and in house a holy thing, which is us as babies. Because in that womb, he says, we have been sanctified. Sanctification means made holy. Ordained means set aside to do something very significant 
for the kingdom of God. Guys, let's ask and let's believe. Ask and doubt not within your heart that the very things that you are believing for, you shall receive it. Righteousness shall prevail. I'm going to read a very powerful prophetic word that I found. This is from October 27th, 2012. Listen to this. And this is actually a prophetic prayer. This is Kim. See, Kim taught us. See, this is something that I learned from Kim is to seek to pray prophetically. Because when you seek to pray prophetically, you're tapping into everything that I'm talking about right now. In other words, you're going to tap into the prayers that was already placed inside of you that God already knew that was there before he put you in the womb of your mother. That's powerful prayer. That's when prayer begins to change things. That's when things begin to uh, uh, change according to his word or the word that he's placed inside of you. We change it then. That's the power of this, everyone. Listen to this prophetic prayer. Listen, America, listen. As the storm rages, as the winds come, depicting that which is happening in this land, so as it dies down, one more thing that shall be revealed. Listen, watch, as I will expose that which is yet hidden in the next week, in this next week. Now, let's look at this. Now, I've, I've heard many people say, oh, see what Kim said, it was going, it was going to happen the next week. He's a false prophet. Get, get me behind me. <laughs> because that's, see, God, God is not governed by Kronos. He's not governed by this time. God is in Kairos. That's the time that God is. God is the author of time. Okay, God's timing is, it, it, you know, doesn't line up. Well, it doesn't have to line up with how we think that it should line up. You see? So this next week could be something that that is going to happen, which I believe is what's happening with this word. With this prophetic prayer. So let's continue. And we will listen as you raise up your light upon this nation. We pray, we pray, pray, pray for your protection in the Northeast. Now, no destruction, no more destruction. What's going on in the Northeast? What is going on in the Northeast? There's a lot that is going on. Wickedness that has been planned in the Northeast. Let me tell you something. We will and we shall have the victory. It's a spiritual, it's a spiritual principle that I'm teaching you right now about what was dug for us. Last week, what did we talk about? We talked about the wealth transfer. Listen to this. This is so beautiful. I'm not speaking to you as an individual. Your forefathers, those that prayed for you, that sold. I'm talking about America, that which was labored for. Many evil humanists have stopped these wells up and said, we don't want this to happen. We don't want righteousness. <laughs> if some of them had their own way, they'd shut down every church in this country. Hear what I'm saying. What is ours by inheritance, which our forefathers dug for us, for this nation, that they've tried to stop up and whoever takes occupation says it belongs to us. We can stop it up if we want, even if by right it is yours. This is not going to happen, says the Spirit of the Lord. These wells that were given to you, America, by your forefathers, wells of righteousness, wells of liberty, that were given to you, and now they are stopping up and saying they may be yours by inheritance, but they're, they're ours because we have rulership and occupation. God says this will not happen for a new well shall be dug by a new generation. That's the reason why the devil has attacked this generation over and over and is still trying to attack it. But we're somewhere in a beautiful future. Isn't that right? And we know that the word of the Lord shall come to pass. It will not return to him void of what he sent it to do. It will not return to him void of what he sent it to do. Okay, so let's continue. I hope you're hearing me, everybody. God has big plans for this nation and the whole world is looking at America. Don't tell me they're not. The whole world is looking and they're looking at the economy and they're laughing at us saying these people don't know what they're doing. Well, that's changing. 
How true is this statement right here? And this word came back, back in 2012, 2012. How true is that? Things are changing. I felt the spirit come upon me to say this, and I think you understand what I'm saying. What did our forefathers do? They dug these wells of salvation and deliverance and righteousness so, so we could be Christian people, a Christian nation. And here we are apologizing to the Middle East, to terrorists, because we had something to say about their hypocrisy, calling us infidels. Stop and listen to me. Don't take this lightly, America. Don't take this lightly. For this is what God is doing in this, in this hour. So look, everyone, righteousness, righteousness shall prevail. Unrighteousness is coming down. Look, guys, I want you to share this. I want you to share this. Begin to really, truly pray, ask, and believe. Because there are prayers that, that are on the inside of you that God is waiting for you to just simply ask. Asking is drawing nigh unto him. He says, if you do this, I will draw nigh unto you. Ask and simply believe and watch. Things are going to get better. We used to sing a song, I believe that something good is about to happen. I believe that something good is about to happen. I used to have this real nice little funky line and Kim jumped up on it, man. And we used to, man, we used to go to place to place singing that. And especially in Detroit, we grabbed it in Detroit because something good is truly happening in the midst of all of this ugliness. So guys, I want you guys to be encouraged. I want you guys to be truly blessed and know and know that this future that we're in, though it's ugly, we look good. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. As you can see my background, I'm in the Christmas. I know this Christmas is going to be great. The devil is trying everything in his power to bring depression, to bring chaos. But look, Christ is born. Amen. And speaking of Christmas, let me just play this one little thing. I got to do it again. I love this. This is uh, a little CD. Well, it's, it's an EP that I put together, and it's starring my grandkids along with Jade. And they wanted to do Jingle Bells. Well, they just they said we want to do a Christmas song, but we wanna we want that gritty hip hop uh, uh, feel to it, Papa. And I'm not you know I'm not a hip hop producer. You know that's that's kind of outside of my my realm. But you know I think I did okay. I want you guys to check this out. This is true. This is available on every digital platform. It's called Merry Christmas with the Tribe of Jordan. And you can find this on every platform, digital platform, streaming platform. Man, it's out there. It's very lovely. Check this out. I'm going to end with this. That's my grandkids, man. That's our grandkids, man. We really love them. And uh, uh, little Aurora at the beginning, that 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 lead vocal, she sung that with no pitch correction, no auto tune, nothing like that. That little girl is a psalmist. Hey guys, I want you guys to have a wonderful week and know that you are truly somewhere in the future and you look so much better than you look right now. And when J E S U S is in effect, Jesus is truly by our side. Guys, we put that dog dev in check. See you next week. Peace.